Hey everybody, Jay Super Awesome here. I'd like to welcome you all to week number 38 of the Horror Man Slashback Saturday Challenge. This week's slasher movie theme is Unrestricted Slashers, and I will be giving my review for Carver. Okay, so getting into the plot for this one. Based on true events, Carver tells the real-life tale of five friends on a short camping trip in the mountain town of Halcyon Ridge who take a small detour to a abandoned stockyard owned by the Carver family. They stumble upon an amateur horror film set in the stockyard. As they explore their eerie surroundings, they discover the truth behind the film and the Carver family. They begin to open doors that should never have been opened. Soon, it becomes a matter of life imitating art and art imitating death. Witness one of the most terrifying killing sprees ever to splash on screen. As you scream, you'll wonder what the Carvers could possibly do next. Okay, so getting into my thoughts for this one. With this week's slasher movie theme of unrestricted slashers, we were simply challenged to watch and review a slasher film that was rated anything but R. So it could be an unrated director's cut of a film, or it could have even been a PG-13 movie. So I have decided to watch and review Carver, the unrated The Grizzly Edition, because it had been a long time since I had seen it, and it's one that I do remember liking, but for some reason, I haven't seen it since its original release. And I have to say that I highly enjoyed this movie, and it's going to be a high recommendation. Carver is one of those slasher films that explains a lot about me and the kind of slasher movies that I enjoy. A slasher movie doesn't have to have a big budget. In fact, I really enjoy the gritty look of low-budget slasher films. It just seems to give it that extra personality and character. It doesn't have to do anything outrageous or groundbreaking with the storyline. It can have standard characters with average acting. It can be standard all across the board and I can still enjoy it. If the movie has a good setting and a cool killer that delivers some fun kills, then the chances are that I'm going to be entertained by it. And Carver definitely checks off all of these boxes. In fact, I really don't have much of anything at all negative to say about it. I'm not a big fan of the cover art. It definitely doesn't do this movie any justice. And by looking at the cover art alone, you might not even know that it's a slasher movie. I could easily see people mistaking it for some sort of supernatural film or something. Something else that I wanted to mention is that the music in this movie is a little bit of a mixed bag for me. We have this generic alternative rock sounding music, which was... Pretty common in slasher movies of this time period, Carver was released in 2008, and a lot of low-budget slasher films would use generic-sounding alternative music, so I was pretty used to it, so it didn't really bother me a whole lot. But we also have this hee-haw-sounding music that the killer will play over and over in a loop when he is murdering his victims. So I could potentially see that getting on somebody's nerves, but... Considering this is a backwoods hillbilly type of slasher movie, I thought it worked. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the cast of characters we have in Carver. We have a pretty standard group of characters in this movie. We have a group of friends who are going on a weekend camping trip. We have brothers who are looking to bond and spend some time together. The older brother seems to be really excited for the trip and overall seems like a positive person. On the other hand, we have the younger brother who seems like he could care less about this camping trip and is basically like whatever about the overall situation, so he's just pretty much along for the ride. We have the older brother's best friend and his girlfriend who are the life of the party, and they are basically the comic relief of the movie, and they pretty much just want to party and have a good time. Once the group reaches their camping destination, they pass by a girl who appears to be camping alone. But after they talk with her, we find out that she's actually waiting on a friend who is known for just taking off and eventually coming back whenever she's ready. So while she waits on her friend, she becomes friends with this new group of campers. But after we've seen the opening sequence of the movie, we know that her friend is never coming back. We do have a few side characters. We have the local sheriff, and we have the owner to the local bar. Overall, I really enjoyed the characters in this movie, 
and I thought the acting was pretty decent for a low-budget slasher film, but I will say that as the movie started, I wasn't really sure that I was going to like the characters, but they did grow on me, and I did enjoy following them through the storyline. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the most important part of a slasher movie, that is the killer and the kills. So I absolutely love the killer in this movie. We basically have a large hillbilly who wears overalls, he wears an aviator's cap with goggles. It's a very effective look for a backwoods hillbilly killer. Something that I thought was interesting about the killer in this movie is that he actually likes to make his own slasher movies. He likes to film while he murders his victims, and he has quite the collection of snuff films. The characters in this movie stumble across his films and begin to watch them. They all seem to be having a pretty good time while they watch the killer's grotesque masterpieces. But of course, later they find out that what they had been watching was in fact real, and they realize that they could very well be the killer's next victims. So we do have the perfect setup for the slasher villain in this movie. Something else I really liked about the killer is that he likes to use a wide variety of murder weapons. He likes to film himself using a wide variety of murder weapons. So we do have a wide variety of kills in this movie, which adds to the overall entertainment value. And as far as the kills go in this movie, it has a pretty high body count, especially when you factor in, we get to see a lot of kills from the snuff films. There's a lot of blood and a lot of gore. The kill sequences are filmed perfectly. We get to see pretty much everything. It's violent and gruesome and a lot of fun to watch. And for some reason, this movie has some of the nastiest bathrooms you could ever imagine, which leads one of the victims to getting covered in human feces and having one of his testicles crushed by a pair of pliers. Ouch. We have people getting killed with a large handsaw, a nail gun, and also a tire iron that's attached to a rope that gets hung in somebody's eyeball as they try to escape. And that's just getting started. Overall, I highly recommend Carver. If you're a fan of low-budget slasher movies, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. And maybe not everybody will be as high on this one as I am, but this is definitely my kind of movie. So please like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know if you have seen Carver, or just let me know what you think about my review. And I would like to thank you all for watching.